Greetings from the Badger House porch in Idaho. It's a glorious fall day here today. And uh, we're going to cover some things on the, on the upcoming dance, which is Santa Cruz, California. And you're all invited to participate. So Joni, um, a lot of people that are joining us today probably don't know exactly about where we put on this dance and, uh, and the history of Indian Canyon. Could, so could you elaborate on that a little bit, please? Indian Canyon. Indian Canyon is the, is the physical name of the site. You might or not be able to find it on a map. It is the only dance we have, Clyde, that is danced on continuously held indigenous land. Emery Sayers is the owner of the family. That's, it's the Sayers family property because passing your land down from family to family in California is how they manage to keep it indigenously held. And for 300 miles in either direction, there isn't another plot of land that is tribally controlled or tribally owned. So it's ancient and it is actually held as a, a place for any tribal nations in the area to conduct ceremonies. So many ceremonies occur on that site, but the traditional site for, on which we dance is classic for Mutsuhlone, and it is a pit. So the dance ground is literally sunk down into the ground and the, direction, and the directions are above it. So it's in the earth. And what's interesting about that is that the site of that pit where it was dug is where Anne-Marie's original house growing up was. So when they set that pit, they set it literally in the place where her ancestors lived and died, her, her family lived and passed and went on. So it's a deep place and it has a lot of resonances in a way that are very close to the surface. And so California's had a lot of experiences with things being very close to the surface. So it's a powerful place. Mm -hmm. And it's a powerful place to connect to. I'm honored to have been asked to, to be available on, by phone in case somebody, well, the quote was, just in case somebody gets into a place they can't get out of. If you really get into trouble in the course of that dance or you're puzzled or confused, I've stepped up to be available in that way. So don't hesitate, please take care of yourself because this whole dance is really all about precisely that. There, you can see Karen Saunders, our female dance chief from California will be present. Jazzy will be present with the bundle and there will be a very, very skeleton queue, crew, much like there was a very, very skeleton crew. See, kind of like these guys on here. <laughs> So Indian Canyon's theme is reconnection with the earth, mm -hmm. reconnection, rest for yourself and renewal and listening, above all listening, resting and listening, hearing what the earth has to say to you, digging in and connecting with the original peoples wherever you happen to be. So if you're in Massachusetts, you might be digging into and connecting with the Wampanoag or any or any variety of other nations that are in that area. So their call has been to take a look at who are the original people in your area and make an effort to listen to the earth and also to listen to, to learn a little bit about them. That's been part of their call for their dance. That's distinct to this dance. Honor and listen to the ancestors of the land. Mm -hmm. Yes. And to do that in a practical way, I think that's really the, that's the, the operative theme here is to, they even offered in the call letter, they even offer you a link to a map of one of many maps of original indigenous people on Turtle Island. It's pretty together. So you could literally look up where you live and find out, well, who are the people who traditionally lived here? You may discover along the way that a lot of those people don't live there now, not because they're gone, but because they were removed like my people. Yeah, removed, or in some cases, uh, the tribes have become extinct. That is also true, or they've merged. That would be typical. Tribes, yes. That would be typical of, say, of several of the Inde tribes. I mean, nobody knows who Badankahe anymore, but 
because they're all merged with uh, Chiricahua. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're really asking people to, first of all, to take care of yourself and then to think about yourself as being bigger than yourself, but also yourself in connection with Mother Earth, the land and beings that are alive that are not necessarily two leggeds and to make, to make all of that part of your reconnection. And then they're asking you to go a little further. They're, they're asking you to find out what, what, are the, what are the indigenous people in your area working on and to find out how your intention can support that. That's a tall order. I think it's possible to think of it in a simple way as beginning your relationship with original peoples. It doesn't mean run out and go to Standing Rock. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean run out and go to the tar sands. It might, you might end up doing that one of these days, but I think if you had not rested beforehand, that wouldn't be useful to you or anybody else. So the real purpose here is to take care of yourself in such a way so that you can be of service. I keep hearing this theme in the dances lately, being in service to spirit. I've heard it three or four times in the last week, yeah. but it's coming up again and again, being in service to spirit. And I think what they've identified in, in Santa Cruz is that that can only happen if you, you can only really be in service to spirit if you are healthy and strong and taking care of yourself and listening and connected. It takes both those things. It doesn't happen without either one. So that basically is the call of their dance. And that's mm -hmm. it's a good that, one. It's a strong one. Yeah. I think the only two things that are, let's see, things that have differed from dance to dance that Santa Cruz is doing this year is that they are not requiring intention guiding from returning dancers. However, they are highly recommending it. Whether you ultimately intention guide or not, all new dancers, which they are welcoming, are being asked to intention guide. In fact, I think it's Ash Lightning Woman who's also who's taking care of all of the newest dancers so that there's a real clear orientation, one person focused primarily on them. However, whether you intention guide or not, people are being encouraged, highly encouraged to share their intention the same way we would if we were at the dance standing together and we would speak them around the tree before we began dancing. Yes. Happens, it happens every dance, nothing strange about that. Yes. So they're asking people, they've included a spreadsheet. They have a space for your intention. They have a space for any ancestors that you would like to put on the virtual ancestor altar and they're providing they're providing access for images on their facebook page so that well, is something else that's never been done yeah well like we say the dance as we get into the uh, era of covid and uh, and dancing from afar the dances uh, uh each each locality and community it's evolving more and more one of the things that came up for me <clears throat> was occurring during the last dance. Um, a lot of the people in, oh, in uh, Oregon and, and Washington uh, were gathering in small groups, five, six, you know, to observe the dance together as a, 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 as a, a group of people in a, in a community. And uh, of course, practicing social distancing and wearing the masks and etc. And uh, they seem to have good results with that. You know, to actually some of I know some of the comments was, "Well, I haven't seen these people for a long, long time." And so, um, if it's a, if I would suggest that if you have friends available that are Naraya people, you know, that you reach out and see if they want to gather for an observance of the stance. It seems like a good idea, again, with the social distancing and all things that, uh, that um, are needed for that. So what do you think about that? 
It's it's interesting because I had a conversation with with bundle keeper Deb Bickford in New England. She talked about how she became aware that there were two or three groups in this last dance of people who were getting together in small groups like that. And she said she was she said the thing that was most important to her, which I think certainly bears saying again for Santa Cruz, is that she was really clear that gathering together was important and powerful, but that it absolutely was not a mini dance. Yes, a mini dance. Dance. Yeah. That it was that it did not mean that people could sing the songs. It did mean that people would look out for one another. It did mean that conversely, of course, they could offer songs, they could share songs that have personal meaning for them as we've talked about in past past mm -hmm. fireside chats. But they were really very careful to, she was, she was adamant about that. She said, she said, and I quote her, I was very strict about people being responsible and careful because that was a huge element of, of care in the New England dance. That was something that they went way out of their way to super ensure. So I think it's, so I think that the power of people gathering together, Claude, I think that's beautiful. And I think it certainly is, it certainly is possible if people are smart. Yeah, so that's a, that's an idea. Which should make a nice feast. Yeah, make a nice. meal would be great. Yeah. It sounds like uh, the, um, dance in Santa Cruz is going to be a good one. It sounds like things are well thought out. And again, those of you that are interested in attending in the, with the Dancing of Far, uh, you should read that call letter. I think I would also encourage them, Clyde, to take a look at the other, the other videos that are available on the Dance for All People website that support that. Because if someone chooses to make a vision arrow, the way they're gonna learn about that if they haven't done that before, is from a page on Dance for All People. There's no, no. also really articulate instructions around dancing from afar that can help you clarify for yourself how you want to hold that space. Mm -hmm. Whether it be a solo or in possibly a group. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's, a, I think, going to be a transfer of the buffalo skull there at that dance. Too. I think that's what's going to happen too as well. That's good. Um, all things must move, all things must change. Mm -hmm. A lot of things are moving and changing and that's what they call evolution. Yes, and um, that's what 2020 is all about. <laughs> well, thank you, family and friends of the Naraya for attending our sixth fireside chat. As we progress through the year 2020, uh, there's tremendous change afoot, not only with the dance, but the people of this land in this country. And when 2020 is over, nothing will be the same. We can't go back to what people refer to as normal. And that's what we've been dancing for all these years, folks. We always tell you, the Naraya dance of all people is a dance of change. It'll change your life personally. It'll change your life of your family. It'll change the country and it will change how we do things. And that's something that, uh, as my uh, grandmother Gladys Laban used to say, uh, well, You've hitched yourself to a wild pony, sweetheart. <laughs> and so it is. We're in for the ride. So maintain your, maintain your center. Be prayerful. Um, and uh, don't let despair get a hold of you. Because things will change. And usually when they change, it might be a rough change. But in the end, it's all for the good. So blessing keep each and every one of you, and thank you for tuning in. <laughs>